Let's take a look at some long-term charts for Ethereum, some multi-month targets. If this bull run comes back, get out the imaginary profit calculator. So what I did was look at a few coins using the same metrics like I typically do. Try to stay objective here. First one was Fibonacci retracements and extensions. So for these specifically, you pick a high and a low, and it gives you a 1618 which is typically used when I look for chart patterns, uh, their targets. So you have a high, you have a low, you fib it out and you get a level. It has a high probability of reaching if this pattern resolves in the expected direction. You can also add the measure move onto this and then it gives you a zone of take profit, basically. But if we're looking at price discovery or multi-month bull trend territory, you can pick any high and low you want. You know, beyond the all-time high for Ethereum, which similarly to Bitcoin hit around 1300 bucks, kind of crazy, in the 2017-2018 mayhem, a 1618 extension would be around 2400 Now, more reasonably, a 1618 of the most recent high and low would be about 500 so The 2618, which is just another extension up, would be around 700 700 750 which is also the 50 percent retracement of all-time high to local low so these are all just levels to watch for put them in the back of your mind in case things get crazy you can put them on your chart in like a really faint color just in case you see it six months from now and say oh yeah that's right that's the 50 percent of this thing or this that's right it's a 2618 of this range so as we approach it, if we get a weakness in momentum, you could say there's a confluence for our resistance, there's a better reason to take profit, adjust your position sizing, that sort of thing. Looking at yearly pivots, pivots which, which are not subjective, not based on highs and lows that are selected, but based on math, highs and lows of the previous year. So these are printed on January 1st of every year and are usually pretty good for similar reasons. You know, if you're approaching like if we're cliffing on this trend uh, chart pattern, for example, if it's cliffing on a yearly pivot and it breaks down, the odds are pretty good that it, that will be a strong break. You know, same here. Broke down, strong break, broke up, strong, broke down, strong, hit resistance here. So these are just levels to watch for. It's a ladder. So what does it look like now? Oh, look, we hit this R1 almost exactly dead on, even though it printed January 1st. Weird, right? TA doesn't work, right? So where we are, where are we now? We're on this yearly pivot. We're kind of snaking in and out of it. Next pivot up again would match this previous high at around 300. Just levels to watch for going forward. You always want to see, is there weakness around a yearly pivot? If there's weakness around a yearly pivot, it's very hard to be convinced that it's going to break without extended consolidation. Just like here, there was strength around this pivot, took extended consolidation to break down. Didn't actually get any consolidation really at this yearly pivot here and broke down. Broke below this pivot and boom. <laughs> like, don't always see it the same day, but when it happens, it's pretty interesting. Um, in general, when volatility is low, pivots condense. And as volatility expands, pivot uh, pivots expand. But again, you generally see it as a ladder. So it breaks up, breaks down, breaks up, breaks down, breaks up. It, these are usually really good levels to watch if you're in this multi-month bull trend. Looking at the MA multipliers, so this is the two-year MA, which is likely too high of a time frame for Ethereum just because it hasn't had that much price history. But if we look at the two-year MA and then five times the two-year MA, it gives us this oscillator where it's, this is overbought, this is oversold. Interestingly, ever since 2018, mid-2018, it's been calling for this massive buy zone. The two-year MAs are trending down, which is not something you want to see if you're bullish. It's also hit resistance on you know, all of these so far. But this does say if this breaks 222 convincingly, the next rung up would be above 1K. You can see it captures this sell zone up here. Another way you can read this is I'm watching these MAs when it breaks below, right? And then I finally actually buy when it breaks above because that says consolidation's over. It's ready for the new phase. Same same thing up here. You know, you can buy or you can 
watch it when it breaks up, and then finally sell when it breaks down. This time frame is probably just too high to really watch. What I'd do if I redid this was probably just look at a lower time frame. So it captures this zone here. Would probably capture the bottom of these zones. But if I'm just looking at the same metrics for all the coins, this is what pops up. And this is Tesla. I just show this because it's something that's not crypto and it works as well. Same thing. This is the two year MA. And then this is two times the two year MA. So you can adjust this sort of back test. You know, where were the resistances here? I expect that similar resistance up here. And oh, what do you know? Hit that level. You know, as absurd as this price discovery was for Tesla, it was projected based on you know, previous resistance levels. Is this a little bit dubious? Sure, but it's one way to measure price discovery, right? So that when you're just free floating up here, you're like, oh, you know, I don't know where resistance is. I don't know where support is. But if you look at these MAs and you can say, oh, it was resistance here, might be resistance again. Then lastly, just looking at the pitchfork for ETH, which is kind of all over the place. I do like this anchor. It's definitely a multi-month, year and a half low. Okay, so it's a strong anchor. The next points are up to you. I like these points here. Arguably, you could use this as the total of the pitchfork and then an extension for this other part. But because it hit a new low pretty convincingly, it's probably better to do that. So what does this show? What does it tell you? It tells you we're in a bull trend. Pitchfork pointing up should be bullish. Down should be bearish. It says that the resistance and support are here and here diagonally. It says that the media line, or the most likely price point, is around 250 plus, and that'll continue to rise. If this is to hold this pitchfork, price likes to trend in this green zone. It likes to touch this yellow line over and over and over again. So if this is going to be a multi-week, multi-month trend, this is where price likes to live, likes to live in this area. So this isn't something you necessarily watch in the now, but it's something to watch over the next weeks and months. Again, if this if crypto blooms into this bull environment that it has the potential to finally do. You know, Ethereum has been sideways basically since late 2018. And it's got some fundamental things coming up where there's potential for FOMO, you know, resistance breaking, catalyst, that sort of stuff. So this is these are the price levels I'd watch over the next few weeks to months.